Hi, this is Steve Caldwell, and today we're going to talk about using port aliases in Bo MIDI Translator Pro. There are two types of port aliases, auto aliases and user aliases. Audio aliases, as the name implies, are automatically created by Mo Bo MIDI Translator Pro for every virtual port defined. User aliases are created manually by the user when setting up a project. Aliases are not real ports, they're just pointing to existing real ports, allowing you to use more meaningful names for the ports on your system. Both Windows and OS X create MIDI port connections when MIDI devices are attached. The names of these connections can, in some cases, be vague and confusing, as I'll demonstrate later. The advantages of using port aliases are threefold. First, it allows you to provide meaningful names, making your project easier to read. Second, by using port aliases, your project code can be more flexible as your device configuration changes. Finally, your project can be more portable when sharing project files with other users. Here's an example of actual ports versus port aliases. The second set of these devices are actually created by Bone MIDI Translator uh, Pro as port aliases and it's recommended you use these as opposed to the actual port as we'll show later. Now let's show you how to create a, a port alias. First of all go to your project ports and click create alias. Give it a name that's meaningful to you. In this case I'll use my input and then assign it a real port. In this case I'll use the iConnect port which is not very meaningful. <clears throat> and then on output I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create an alias. I'll call it my output and I will assign that to a Bone MIDI translator port. So now with these aliases I can actually use the routing capabilities uh, to link to the actual ports, actually linking from the alias on the input to the alias on the output. First of all I'm defining the ports so that they show up on my port screen. Let's close that up. Now we can see the uh, port aliases I've created and I can just tie those together and now from now on I can use the port alias as opposed to the actual port name and it'll be more flexible. Now here I've actually disconnected my iConnectivity device and you can see that it's complaining that it's not found but since I've got a uh, alias set up I can easily remap that device to a different device if I wish. So I'll open up the devices and I'm going to edit the alias name for that device by clicking edit and now I can tie this to a different device that's on my actual system so I can still use the my input device or my MIDI device as the input and tie it to the new actual device that I'm using without having to make any other changes to the project itself. If I share this project with a friend and he opens it up, he'll see something like this in which he'll be prompted to assign an alias for whatever device he has using the device that I had defined. So this makes it more flexible as far as uh, sharing with other people as well. Now let's see an extreme example. On my iConnectivity device, all the ports are named a very generic name which are very hard to define, but I can remap those using my own names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map a couple of them for... I'm going to call the first one Hammond because it's going to my Hammond device on my iConnectivity, and I'll tie that to iConnectivity 1. Now I'll do the same thing for the Korg device which happens to be on DIN 2 and it's on iConnectivity 2. So after I've done this, you'll actually be able to see uh, meaningful names as opposed to the uh, generic names assigned, in this case, by Windows. After setting up my port aliases, I can now change the routing to link to the port aliases that I'm using. It'll make a lot more sense of what I'm actually doing with my project. 
Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach us at www.bohm.com.